Trump's on March headline durable goods. Let's take out transportation. It's down six tenths. You remember last month strong? Three four and three nine respectively. Those were downgraded rather substantially. The three four and headlines now two one, stripping out transportation originally three point nine is now two percent. So the weakness is about half what we were expecting, but they took away a good chunk of last month. Let's let the market decide what this is about. We're seeing the pre-opening equities, the Dow futures, not an indication where it's actually trading in the futures markets, has moved up from 30, let's say, to 50. And on interest rates side no real change interest rates are up a bit from their closes yesterday but to be fair they climbed close to three percent higher yield than we have now in the 10 year but we saw a rally towards the end of the session we still have new home sales we're still going to get information on the guidelines to the uh, assessments of the banks referred to as the stress test and all of that of course has a potential to move the markets back to you guys yep you're right rick let's get uh, more reaction uh, from some other voices this is Jim Uria, director of TJM Institutional Services, uh, and Steve's weighed in on some other. Steve, I, I, anything here that, that uh, that's not immediately apparent in the, uh, in the, the headline numbers? Uh, Joe, let me just take a look at the table here very quickly. It's come in. Um New orders, X defense minus zero six. I don't like the revisions. Non-defense capital goods. That's a uh, proxy for um, business investment. Actually, up 1.9. So that's pretty good. I need to look at that uh, X aircraft. Uh, I don't have that number right in front of me, but. Um, not maybe as bad as it seems. You know, they were looking for a minus one and a half in the consensus, so minus 0 0.8. The trouble is they're going to have to do some downgrading to the first quarter GDP numbers because of the uh, the previous downgrade for February. G Jim Urio, 8,000, it seems like, you know, we're either a little above or a little below. Um, I, I wish you could tell me, you know, what was next. Um, just sure, in, I can it, tell you. Give me a guess, nine or seven. I don't, you know. Uh, I actually... I think nine before seven. I don't think we go again. This week has been so confusing to me. We've had two strong closes, two weak closes. We haven't got a lot of clarity. But if you take a big step back, you say to yourself, well, this is one of the biggest weeks of earnings season, and it wasn't a disaster. To me, you have to put that in the positive ledger. So I like this market. But today's a big day. I think when I have such little clarity from the fundamentals, because, you know, obviously the fundamentals are bad, but the question becomes, is the stock market already priced that in? Yes, it's happy stress test day. Is that going to bring us uh, bring us any news that's going to clobber us. And my guess is it's probably, we probably anticipated it was going to be worse than it actually is. I can't imagine the government's going to deliver these huge knockout punches at such a precarious time. So that leaves us today. If we rally the market a little bit, we get the futures up above 862, I think we'll see a little bit of a follow through. But today is definitely a day where I'm waiting to see what the price action is today to give me some clarity from the rest of the week. Steve, I, I, everyone says it. If it's good, it's whitewashed. If it's bad, it's uh, it's already in. You know, it's up what we already expected. Well, remember that comment we just had from the official Joe, where he said most people think they're above average, and I think if you look at the think about the reverse side of that, it's they're going to get some information about how much how, how good they're doing relative to how the, well they think they're doing. Uh, that will be news to them. Um, I just want to chime in with one uh, piece of data here I, I didn't have. Wait a second. Um, if yeah. most people think they're above average, right. does that mean that Rel potentially you could be talking about the overall situation being better than these guys expect or that everybody stinks? Um, that people who think they're in good shape relative to where they think they are are going to get some news from the government that they may not be in as good a shape as they as they think they are. All right. So stinky album. Yeah. I just want to give you this um, proxy for business spending or business investment up 1.5 percent we just took out aircraft from the last one you like so i, I love this metric it feeds in the gdp yeah it's a it's a leading indicator um at least it's certainly coincident and somewhat leading uh, and that's two months in a row and what we've seen over the course of this downturn is in general businesses less reluctant to cut capital spending than they are to cut employees mr so, yes rick you know, we don't know the guidelines, so it's pretty hard to get too excited about this. But let me ask you a hypothetical question, considering you talk to a lot of uh, officials, and, you know, I quite refrain from doing that. Do you think that their stress tests would allow for an unemployment rate, for example, as high as 12 or 13 percent? You know, I don't know that, uh, Rick. What but we do, you do know... do think it should? Do you think it should? I, I don't have an assess... I, I don't know, Rick, how to, how to why, assess why? facts in that regard. Here, Mr. Steve, come um, on. You know, what, what I know is that we were told... Uh, earlier this morning that this was a uh, they were tested for an economic outcome that is considerably worse than what we anticipate so they tested it for what happened maybe a year and a half ago <laughs> I, I don't I don't think so Rick Rick I don't think so I think that that we, we will see these things and if they did that it would look stupid 
And I, I, I don't, I don't, I, that was really the stress that it didn't survive. Rick, here's the thing. You want to have banks have enough capital for I a just certain don't want outcome. Them to have our capital. Rick, Rick, here, here's the thing. You are a local official on the banks of the Mississippi River. Yeah. You are now required, Rick, to raise the levy and raise money for the levy for a certain flood. Okay. What flood do you pick? Do you pick the 100-year flood, I the 200-year flood, the 500-year flood, or the 1,000-year flood, Rick? They should rules about the flood, and when they don't make the rules aggressive enough, they should flood away into oblivion. No, I agree with that, Rick, but the idea... That's, that's great, Rick. <laughs> that is fantastic. The, the idea, Rick, is that if banks will not trade with each other, then we have the situation we have Who now. Who cares if they we trade have with each other? Rick, do you understand you know, how the banking system works, Rick? Historically, Rick, Rick get out what? of the pits, Rick. Get out of the pits. There's information know, outside I'm the pits. I'm not in the pits, Steve. Okay? I think you're in the pits, and I'm not talking about the trading pits. Uh, Rick, Rick, you're in this environment here where you have no idea what's going on. You don't even understand oh, how the I banking understand. system you works, Rick. Book. You Rick, found the environment Rick, in the book. Rick, Between if banks Between 90 cannot... and 99, where, you know, we did things in the 1930s, and, no, you know, Rick, we have to try Rick, to follow those rules. If books. banks can't borrow from each other, you do not have a banking system. A bank does I don't not think we have a banking system now. A bank does that's true, Rick. System that's trying to figure out where they want to go you know, with taxpayer dollars. Rick, I can argue with the reality, or I can argue with your illusion I about what the reality, the reality should be. The but right now, I'm arguing with straight. your illusion. But, right. but in your and illusion, Steve, Rick, I have some more. Rick, do I have to check the market? Rick, you can go to the library. In your illusion, banks fund their loan lending from current deposits. They do not, Rick. They go out and they borrow money from each other. I didn't say that. I didn't other. say any of that. If Steve, they don't lend to each other, you said who cares that. if they don't lend to each other? They don't lend to each other, Rick. You do not have lending. You do not have a banking system, but in your illusion, you can live in any way you want to live, Rick. Go ahead. Hey, Steve, it looks guess. like all the demand for loanable funds is just going through the roof out there, doesn't it? We're Not exactly. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm coming more often because yes. this is entertaining. I know. I know. And I, I, it's like a, like an old friend, like putting an old baseball Holy glove spontaneous. on. Spontaneous. I like it. Probably all right. Planned on it. Hey, it's Uriel, are you still there? Yeah, I got. I can help. I think you can. I think what Rick, yeah, I think what Rick is saying is it's comical to think that the government is going to give us this worst case scenario to think of how badly they played you, the whole worst case scenario thing in the past. But in, in Steve's defense, they have to say something. They can't okay. say. Well, and they're going to tell us So it's another one of these say somethings. All I know is but follow gonna, the action. But Rick, they're going to exactly, tell us. Exactly, but it's necessary. They're going to tell us the though. metrics, though, right? Like, around two o'clock, I mean, we should have will a much be better information. Idea. Whether or not we will know, Rick. We will know, Rick. Rick, here's what I was told, and I don't know if it's true or not, but the, co the concept here I is to inform, inform the markets, Rick, not displace the market's assumption. The oh, markets come to a series. Huh? Yeah, they're really, that's really the motto they've been following. Yeah. Well, yeah. then the markets will have a lot to say on whether the test They'll was onerous enough. I mean, whether that's, it's onerous that's, enough? That's exactly. Exactly. Thank, Thank you, Ivanka. That's all. Rick wants less information. He wants less information, and he wants some form of a banking system that was pre-1930, so that if they, if, if depositors like steal Steagle a back. bank, hey, if depositors the steal a bank is going Steagle under, they should line up to get their funds out. That's what we should this have. Is a very be with the topic. This is an interesting microcosm of what go. we're likely to hear from the administration and what we're likely to hear from the market back. I like how Yuri is in the middle, too. Look, I know, that's good. Yeah. Right in the middle. <laughs> There is no middle. Take a stand. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Do we really have to go? We like that. I do. I do. I love that. If we do it with two boxes, not eight, then we get a lot more.